Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everyone as we get ready to worship the Lord here at Carlisle First Church of God on this Lord's Day. And uh, we are welcoming you all in here as you're getting in here, finding your seats. And uh, it's just uh, good to welcome visitors among us this morning as well. Welcome to you. We thank you for being here. Uh, we hope you feel welcomed and uh, enjoy our, your time of worship with us here today. Uh, on, on your way out, you, if you want to stop by our visitors uh, station out there in the lobby, we'd love for you to stop by there. We have a little something from us to you. Uh, we'll get to know you a little bit better that way as well. Uh, our announcements uh, this morning. The Alder Flowers are presented by Linda Chesky in celebration of her son's birthday, which is tomorrow. Well, happy birthday to Zach. Um, next week is the last week to bring in your items for Capital Area Pregnancy Center. So please make sure if you want to give towards that, that you have those in here next Sunday. Uh, there's a list of items in the bulletin if you want to do that. Um, today is the last day for JARS, the airplane and uh, helicopter rides out at the Carlisle Airport. So if you want to get out there and, and take advantage of that today, that is available to you. It's a fundraising event for them out there. Also, get to know a little bit more about JARS. Um, let's see here. Pastor Greg, come on up at this time. Actually, you don't, you got, okay. All right, I'll do that. Um, that. Let's see here. Today is Mission Sunday. It's also the Sunday where we're celebrating missions, our mission celebration here at our church. That's at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Please come out for that. Uh, it's a great day for it. It's going to be cold outside, nothing to do outside. But inside here, it's going to be nice and warm, and we're going to celebrate uh, missions here today. And we'd love for you to come out and hear the different people that are speaking find out what's going on uh, around the world in, in missions. Uh, on your way in this morning, as you were giving your offering, you probably saw that there are some plates with a little sign in front of them that says missions offering. Uh, if you didn't uh, see that on your way in, would like to do that on the way out, please uh, give to that. That is uh, contributing to our goal of $8,000, and that will be given at the missions celebration today. Uh, the Children's Christmas Project is coming up quickly. If you would like to give towards that, helping local children uh, have a Merry Christmas, uh, that money can be given to Judy Pross or Beth Hench by Sunday, November 7th. Make your check out to the church, Carlisle First Church of God, and market Christmas project on the memo line. Uh, I went with Jolly Old Timers this week uh, on a bus trip to Perry County. There it is up there. And uh, honestly, when I thought, what in the world are we going to do over in Perry County? I thought, well, it's fall. We'll see some, um, some fall foliage. And uh, it, was, it was starting to get nice. But I'll tell you, we, we saw all kinds of stuff. Uh-oh, uh where'd it go? <laughs> honestly, we did. We did. <laughs> but uh, there we go. All right. Yeah, it is. That was part of the trip. We stopped at a church built in 1766 over there. Beautiful stained glass windows. And uh, this was our guy, Gary. He, he knows everything and what you, I mean, he'll tell you anything and everything about Perry County. And uh, more than you want to know sometimes. But, um, <laughs> and here was uh, a one room schoolhouse that we stopped by and they have that decorated. Uh, on the inside uh, with the inkwell desks and all that. Uh, covered bridge that we some of us walked across, Shoals Mill, Shoals Mill. Uh, and then uh, that, that was just, just an amazing time. There's that bridge again uh, inside the mill. And then, is it time to go home yet? And uh, to, to Bob's defense, uh, he was awake. I just happened to take a picture when he closed his eyes. So. But I'll tell you, it, it, is, it reminded me when you, go, when you go on a trip with the jolly old timers, it's like going with kids on a weekend trip. When we, when we went out, everybody was like, blah, 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 blah. When we came home, everybody was just kind of like, <sighs> everybody's just completely tired. But it was a great, great day. We had a wonderful time. And uh, if you didn't go, you really missed out. So check out what the Jolly Old Timers are doing. They're doing some really fun things. Pastor Greg, your announcement. 
All right. First business. Can I have that? Yeah. Thanks, sir. First business is uh, I'm going to allow two more weeks for the, uh, the gift cards. So if you would like to order the gift cards, uh, I'm going to give you two more weeks to get your forms back in, get your checks back in, make the church the checks out to the church for that. What I wanted to do was just update you a little bit on youth, sort of, an update. I am bragging, all right, and, and it's totally not my doing. We, um, last Sunday night, okay, so we've been having a fair amount of problems in the youth group, a lot of mental health issues, a lot of depression, anxiety, things like that, and been having some inner turmoil among the kids, and, and I'm like, I want to get this straightened out, at least to some degree, before I take them to Ocean City, Maryland. I didn't want it all just unleashing there. Well, last Sunday night, Chambersburg Church of God was having an evening of prayer and worship, and um, so that he opened up the whole session saying, there are no rules. If you want to come up front and just kneel down and pray, you come up and kneel down and pray. If you want to pray with each other, whatever you want. So we, we go in. So before that happened, we walk in and we're standing there and the kids notice this cool balcony up in the back. And they're like, Greg, can we go sit in the balcony? I said, that ain't happening. I said, we're in the front row. I said, we are sitting in the front row. Well, it ended up, it was a good thing we were in the front row because the kids needed all that space as I watch these kids starting to pray with each other. They're grouping together in little, a little group of three and they're, they're praying over the, the, my one little girl whose mom has cancer and is dying and, and they're praying for her. And then two of the other girls went down the row and they prayed for every kid plus me and probably Jimmy, I don't know, uh, didn't talk to him. Um, I, I guess I can, I got that clicker for a reason. Where did it go, Mike? Oh, thank you. So, and um, so, yeah, so, so I was able to get some pictures. The kids just praying for each other. And uh, at this, at one point, my, my one young man, Javon, went up front and, and he just had his face buried, just praying for probably 10 minutes up there. And then Jimmy went up and was praying with them. And, and I'm like, my goodness, this is, this is the time. We, this was the healing that needed to happen within our group. And um, then as we're driving home, we get on the highway. And, and the young lady whose mom has cancer, from the back of the van, she's just like, hey, Greg, can I like just pray for everybody right now? I'm like, well, of course. That doesn't happen. This, I'm hoping that we're hitting a, a transitional point in our youth ministry, uh, but we're headed to Ocean City, Maryland here in about three weeks, and um, uh, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited with what happened with these kids this past Sunday night, because, you know, for a lot of people, it would have just been a, oh, let's go and sing some nice songs, but it was so much more, and it was just such a great, great evening of healing for the kids, and um, so I just wanted to share what exciting things. Oh, by the way, I want your picture too. Uh, take a picture for Prudy. And uh, so, all right, this side look good. All right, well, you don't look so good, but it's okay. See, yeah, if I said that, I knew I would make people laugh over here. So I think I missed you guys. Yeah, sit still, Mike. It's the one time I get to boss him around. That's cool. So. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Thank you, Mike. Those who are able, please stand and join me in our responsive call to worship, which is found in Psalm 96, verses 1 to 4. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Let us pray. God, we thank you for allowing us to come into your house here this morning as we lift up your name. May your name be proclaimed. May salvation be be proclaimed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for being here with us. Ask that you would be here during this service, Lord. Move in our hearts this day. Lift up our praises now to you, Lord, and we thank you and we ask it all in your son's precious name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We sing two songs, a song for the nations, and I love to tell the story. Oh. 
may be seated. We are receiving new members today. Uh, we're receiving two in this service, and the others will be presented uh, in the next uh, following uh, Sunday school. Uh, we have John and Melissa Brandt uh, being received as members today. Michael and Lisa Cush as they make their way here to the front at this time. Uh, my wife, Natia Poe, as well as being uh, received today, and uh, Jimmy Wolf uh, will also be received as a member today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us and all that you have given to us. We do pray, Lord, that you would uh, just bless these tithes and offerings here this day. Uh, Lord, use them according to your will. We thank you for the missions offering that is being given as well. And we pray, Lord, that that would be used so that more and more people can know about Jesus Christ and how he died. And not only died for our sins so that we can be forgiven, but he was raised from the dead. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. Thank you, Lord. May that message be uh, proclaimed. And Lord, use these uh, monies in a powerful way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you to the choir uh, for that this morning. We've been talking about David, and last week we were talking about the importance of maintaining our integrity in times of trouble. And uh, today we're, our message is titled, Making Decisions Down in the Dumps, God's With You. Kind of a three-point title there for you this morning. But we did. We talked about maintaining our character in times of trouble. And we saw in God's word that it is never right to try to rationalize our sins. Did you get that last week? I hope so. It's never right to try and rationalize our sins. David had lied, and he shouldn't have done this. There was absolutely no way to say in this circumstance that, you know, what he did was okay. We just can't do that. The consequences of his lies were 85 priests put to the sword and the deaths of everyone and everything in the town of Nob by the order of Saul, which was dealt by the hand of this guy named Doeg the Edomite. Terrible guy. There are three things we ought to do when we face troubles in our lives. And I want you to just be reminded of this. We need to remember that God is with us. Remember that God sees and knows our troubles and takes matters into his hands, which is the best place for our problems and ourselves to be. And thirdly, we need to ask for God's peace. Today we're going to be looking at three different things in chapter 23 of 1 Samuel. First, how does one go about making decisions? Is there something we as Christians need to do before making a decision. There is, by the way. We'll look at a little at David being, as I've titled it this morning, down in the dumps. Maybe you've been there from time to time. And what's important for us as believers during these kinds of times? Thirdly, we'll see how God intervenes. When it looks like, well, it just might be the end for David, as Saul pursues him, it appears he's going to come down to a not-so-good ending. Is God there? Turn with me, if you will, to God's word. It is as found in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 1 to 13. Hear the word of the Lord. When David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Caleb. And are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, Go, attack the Philistines and save Caleb. But David's men said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Caleb against the Philistine forces? Once again, David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered him, Go down to Caleb, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Cala, fought the Philistines, and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Cala. Now Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David at Cala. Saul was told that David had gone to Cala and said, God has handed him over to me, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle to go down to Cala to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abiathar, the priest, bring the ephod. David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Cala and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Cala surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O oh Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again, David asked, Will the citizens of Cala surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Cala and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Cala, he did not go there. This is the word of the Lord to us. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for your word. Oh, Lord, how lost we would be without your word. We thank you that you have given it to us to guide us, instruct us, and may we be willing to hear it. Give us ears to hear. Give us hearts that are open. Help us to obey you and your word. And we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
So a few things I left out last week before we get started with the rest of this here uh, today. After leaving Nob, David went to a place called Gath, and I'll let you read about what happened there on your own. Um, But from Gath, he went to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about him being there, they went down to him. Everyone who gathered there were in distress or in debt, or they were discontented. That's the group that was with David, and they numbered about 400 men. David then takes his mother and his father over to Moab, to Mizpah, and asks the king of Moab to allow them to stay there until he would see what God would do for him. And as long as David was in the stronghold, that is where they stayed. Then David is warned by the prophet Gad not to stay in the stronghold, but to rather go into the land of Judah. And so David went there, and he went into a forest called Hereth. And more and more people come to David. We know that David was wondering what God wanted him to do Next, maybe you've been there in your life. You've gotten to this to this point and you know God's been calling you to do something or or maybe you're finishing up something for God and, and you're wondering to yourself, what do you have for me next, God? And we know this because of the comment that he made to the king of Moab. As I said, he asked for his parents to stay there, but did you catch that? He said he, they they stayed there until He, that's David, would see what God would do for him next. Well, David had been, had to have been wondering what God would do for him. But the other question he had to have been asking was, what do I do now? What do I do next? There are times where we have to wait on the Lord for the answer to what happens next in our life. You might be asking that exact question this morning. Lord, what's next for me? Waiting can be hard for many of us. Some of us can become impatient. Especially when we're used to having our food like that. Or we can just order it in the next day, usually. It's at our house. We want to push our own ideas sometimes because we get tired of waiting. We push for our own plans instead of waiting to hear from God. What's next for David? Well, we find out what's next. The Philistines are attacking Israel once again. David is in the forest of Hereth when he hears a report of the Philistines fighting against this town called Cala. And They're looting the threshing floors. They're stealing the food. They're stealing their food. Now, what should he do? How do you make your decisions? This is you. How do you make your decisions? I know this thing called eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And then there's that other one that... um, you do when you want to choose somebody, you know, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Now, usually when we grow up, we put those childish ways of doing something behind us. Now, I'm not saying I haven't played a mean game of rock, paper, scissors, shoots here lately, but usually we put that kind of stuff aside. So, In all seriousness, when the tough decisions come into our lives, we need to act more like David did. He heard the Philistines are fighting against Caleb, and so he inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. What did he ask God? Well, he asked a question that was on his mind. Shall I go and attack these Philistines? God had been with David all the times before that he had set out in Saul's army against the Philistines. But now the situation was different. Or was it? 
It was a little different. David didn't have the army of Saul behind him. He had this ragtag bunch that had joined him, some out of desperation, others because Saul wanted them dead too. Others were close family, probably friends. And still others, well, they just owed a lot of money. So let's just go hang out with David. God, do you want me to attack these Philistines? David wanted to know, do I act now or do I keep laying low, God? I mean, it would be quite a risk. Right now, Saul didn't know where David was hiding. If he moved to help the city of Cala, Saul surely would hear about it. It was the responsibility of Saul as the king to protect Cala. But it wasn't, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. God's answer to David, what was it? Go and attack. Go and attack. God didn't want his people to suffer because of Saul's unfaithfulness. God tells David, go attack and save Caleb. Yet David's men aren't in favor of this. They said, they're already afraid here in Judah where they're hiding with David. How much more so if they went to fight against the Philistine forces? So David listened to their advice, but he did something wise. He went and inquired of the Lord. He did it again. God answered him and he said, go down to Cala, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. Hmm. You know what I think? I think David's faith in God began to grow again. You know, sometimes we can feel we know what God is calling us to, and we're just sure of it. And then, then we hear from others around us, and we begin to doubt ourselves. And, and maybe doubt that it was God in the first place that was calling us to do what he called us to do. During these times, we need to go and inquire of the Lord again. Let God's voice... Listen to this. Let God's voice be the loudest and the one you listen to the most. Amen? Let his voice be the loudest and the one you listen to the most in your life. Always place your trust in the Lord. These men that were afraid obviously didn't have the same kind of faith that David had in the Lord. So David and his men went to Cala and they fought against the Philistines and they inflicted heavy losses on them and they saved the people of Cala. What an awesome day the Lord gave them. Great success, right? David had to have been feeling really, really good. Not only did he beat the Philistines and deal them heavy losses, he also carried off their livestock. Why do you think that would have been important? Well, it's something that they were going to need to take care of so many people that were there with him. David enters the city, which had gates and bars. When Saul heard about this, he called up all his troops for battle to get down to Cala to attack not the Philistines, but David and his men. And Saul thought that he had David trapped. But what he didn't do is what David would Saul may have planned to do evil against David by killing him, but God was not going to let that happen. Saul thought he was the one that was in control of it all, but the fact is, God is the one that is in control. Saul completely turned his back on the Lord. David, however, turned his thoughts and questions over to the one who knows all things. David calls for the priest, Abiathar, and he inquires of the Lord. David knew his situation. Saul's coming for him. He'd be trapped if he stayed in the city, but he could count on, could he count on those people? Could he? The ones that he just saved? You might be thinking, well, I just saved all these people. They got to be on my side now. Or would they hand him over to Saul? So again, David goes and he inquires 
of the Lord. And we see that God, that he asks God a, a bunch of very specific questions. David says to God, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Kayla and destroy the town on account of me. What's the first thing David does? Well, he tells God the situation he finds himself in. Then he asks his questions. Will the citizens of Kayla surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, tell your servants. God responds to David and he says he will. David asks again, will the citizens of Kayla surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord says, they will. Did you notice there what David did? And this is what each and every one of us ought to do as well. Explain your situation to God. But you say, oh, he already knows it. Yeah, he does. But he wants to hear it from you. And then when you have explained everything to God, how you're feeling, the situation you find yourself in, the troubles that are coming maybe from every single side that you turn, then you ask your questions of God. And once you've done that, what do you do? You listen for his answer. You look for his answer to you. It could have been very easy for David to rationalize the idea that the people of Caleb would be on his side now since he saved them from the Philistines. But David doesn't put his trust in the people of Caleb. Mm -mm. He places his trust in the Lord. God tells him that they will hand him over to Saul. David had now 600 men with him. And they left Caleb. I'm thinking some people joined up with him there from Caleb. And they kept moving from place to place. We see that David, what do we see here? From last week to today, something's changed with David. We see that he's learned from his past mistake. Remember those 85 priests that were slaughtered because of him? Well, now he shows that he cares about what will happen to the people of Israel. He's not going to make that same mistake twice. David doesn't want anyone in Kayla to suffer or be put to death because of him. David wasn't one that would typically back down from a fight, but he was a man after God's own heart. Excuse me. He was a man after God's own heart, and part of that was seeking God. You see, just in this chapter, that David inquired of the Lord four different times. David was a man of prayer. And we need to seek the Lord in prayer when we have decisions to make in our life. When you just aren't sure, go to God in prayer. When we have decisions to make in our life, go to God in prayer, inquire of the Lord and God will answer you. And as I've said many different times, it will be yes, no, or just wait a little bit more. That one's tough. Here and no's tough as well. But God is absolutely always correct in his answer to us. We can be sure that God hears us. And that he cares about what we are facing in our lives. Look at that Bible verse we looked at last week. Psalm 10, 14, the first part of it. But you, O oh God, do see trouble and grief. You consider it to take it in hand. David was a man on the run. Our passage says that they left Cala and kept moving from place to place. And I'll tell you, that gets old. It gets old especially if somebody's seeking your life. Not that I've been in that situation, but I have moved around a lot and it gets old. Especially for David, that he's out in the wilderness with very little comforts and always having to look over his shoulder. David was willing to do this for the safety of Caleb, and when Saul heard that he had left, he called off his troops from going there. David was in the desert strongholds and in the hills of the deserts of Ziph, Saul did not give up his pursuit of David. 
Verse 14 says, day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. There are times in our lives that the problems we are facing, whatever it may be, people, financial problems, you fill in the blank, you know what your problems are that you have to face. But when you face them day after day after day, it begins to wear on you. You begin to lose your patience. You begin to lose hope. You need something. David needed something. And that was to find strength in God. Saul's son, Jonathan, remember him? David's best friend. He appears in David's life again. And he goes to help lift his friend's spirit by pointing him in the right direction. Not some GPS coordinate or anything like that. But in the direction he needed to go in his spiritual life. He needed to seek out the Lord to be his strength. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. Song. David wrote that. Jonathan went and reminded David of a few things. First, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God's got this. God's in control. God's not going to let my father lay a hand on you. Jonathan's saying this. Two, you're going to be the next king of Israel. David needed the reminder from his good friend. Jonathan says that he will be David's second. But God had not said this. This was Jonathan's idea, not God's. But what was in God's plan, it was for David to be the next king of Israel. Nothing would stand in the way of that because that is what God wanted. Remember that God is with you like he is, he was with David. It's good for us to gather around us good Christian friends. Amen? You probably will need them at some point in your life. Godly people that will come to your side when you need them most. What a great godly friend David had in Jonathan. When you feel down in the dumps, call your friend by your side. And together you can seek the strength you need, which comes from the Lord. Sometimes we need a good friend to remind us of some things that we already know. But when despair is upon us, it might be hard to bring those to mind. Jonathan reminded his good friend that the Lord was with him. And then he went back home, but David remained in Harash. The Ziphites, you might have some of these in your life. Do you have Ziphites? All right. (laughs) Kind of sounds like something you need to call the pest guy for, doesn't it? (laughs) Ziphites. All of us can identify some Ziphites probably in our lives, but it says here, 1 Samuel 23, 19 to 20, the Ziphites went up to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horesh on the hill of Hakila, south of Jeshuaim? Now, O king, come down whenever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for handing him over to the king. What's Saul's response? The Lord bless you. For your concern for me. He then tells them to go make further preparations. Find out exactly where he likes to hide. Who has seen him. Where he usually goes. Did you notice how flippant Saul is with the Lord's name? He had absolutely no intention of the Lord really blessing them. Just himself. He was in it for himself. We need to be so careful in the way that we use God's name, OMG, saying, oh my God. Using God's name in vain is blasphemy, and that is sin. And we need to be reminded of that today. When you use God's name, make sure it is to be to his praise or to call upon him. Amen. The Ziphites were descendants of Judah. Like David was. They should have been like brothers to David, but they betrayed him any chance that they got. If you look at Psalm 54, David wrote this when the Ziphites had gone to Saul and said, Is not David hiding among us 
And David refers to them in this psalm as strangers and ruthless men that seek his life. Because of their betrayal, he calls them this. David calls them men without regard for God. They were not what they seemed to be. David turned to the Lord again and he prayed and he said, Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. What did he do? He turned to the Lord again in prayer. He turns to God. To whom does David turn? As they turn to him, turn on him on every single side. Wherever he hides in their lands, he turns to God. Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. In the last part of chapter 23, Saul is closing in on David in the desert of Maom. You can kind of just picture Saul with, an, with this evil look and him, him just rubbing his hands together as that evil guy does in the movies. I kind of picture it like that. He's closing in on him. And he believes that this time nothing can stop him from getting David. And the Bible says that Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them. Saul's moving along one side of the mountain and David and his men were moving on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. And it looks like it's going to be the end. Could it be? Where was God now? Well, all seems hopeless for David when escape didn't seem possible anymore. Guess what? God shows up and he saves David. God intervened. Remember last week when we talked about asking in prayer for God to intervene when we face troubles in our lives? God intervenes on David's behalf. A messenger arrives telling Saul that the Philistines are raiding the land again and that they should come quickly. And so Saul has to break off his pursuit of David and go out and meet the Philistines. David went up from there and he lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. By the way, that picture I show you every week is one of the, the places, the natural uh, water uh, fountain in Getty. When life throws everything that it can at you, when it seems like you are between a rock and a hard place like David found himself, remember that our refuge in times of trouble is Christ our Redeemer. Amen. He is faithful and he will not fail us ever. You can turn to the Lord to be your strength and you should look to him when you have important decisions to make in your life. Who or what's been pursuing you? Think about it. Maybe it's time you turn to the Lord for your strength instead of trying to do it all on your own. Maybe it's time to turn to the Lord, your strong tower, the one in whom you can always place your trust. May the Lord bless you as you seek him and do his will. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for the morning, for your word to us. It is good to seek you out always, always, not just when we're in trouble. But Lord, when those times come that we, we've got to make some pretty hard decisions. Life is life. And Lord, there are times throughout our lives that hard decisions come. May we remember to turn it all over to you that you will help us to make the right decisions in our lives. God, when we're down in the dumps, it is good to have Christian friends to turn to. Truly godly people who will remind us that we need to turn to you and place our faith in you, Lord. And Lord, when everything seems like it's all coming down on us, there is no way out. We know, Lord, that you are always with us. We pray that you intervene. Help us, Lord, to place our hope and our trust in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our hope after this world and in it as well. God, we thank you when we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
ask those of you who are able at this time to please stand as we sing our final hymn this morning, Send the Light, number 437. the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for the anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Amen. Amen.